Do you fellas recall Obcast? Like that podcast I used to do? Well, I haven't done it in three months. Partly just because I don't want to. And I kind of grew out of it. But I thought, you know what? It's about to be a new year. Let's do it again. Let's restart it for the second season of Obcast. Starting with something I've done since 2020. The one in 2020 will never be aired because I deleted the recording. Even though I kind of wish I could hear it again. I'm going to be talking about my top 10 most favorite moments throughout the year. I did it in 2020. You can't see it recording. I can't either. I did it in 2021. You can watch that video now. You shouldn't, but you can. And this year, I'm going to be doing my top 10 moments of 2022. Let's just start with the 10th one. Surprisingly, unlike last year, where I believe I had like three or four moments that took place during the month of May... This is the only one that takes place in May. At number 10, we have Poster Maker, as I labeled it on my list. On May 3rd of 2021, our science teacher assigned us the last project of the year. We had to make a poster or a slideshow. Most people didn't do a slideshow. They did a poster, including our group, as if you can't tell, about a natural disaster. We picked dust storms, and we used the Dust Bowl of the 1930s as an example. Me and the fellas, we, we have five fellas, and we only be separated into four groups. Sadly, one of the fellas couldn't make it. I was one of the lucky few that got into the four. Started working on this poster, and we wanted to make it funny. We wanted to make it an enjoyable escapade the end of the year out on. So we did. Like I said, we did about the Dust Bowl, which I know is hard to like make jokes about, but trust me. Instead of having first aid, we made a box out of paper, titled it Second Aid, and that was enough to get a hearty laugh at everyone, not including that, remember, this was like early May, so this joke was still very funny then. Uh, we, it was made by Quandale Incorporated, which that was just like the most funniest thing to a young eighth grade me. But, why I say like me back in May was young? Anyway, so we start working on it, and we... A lot of people enjoy it. it. We did a we did a good job on it. I think we all got an A. And we all like divvied up everything so everyone would get something. One of the fellows wasn't there when we did the presentation, but we just kinda wanted to get it over with. One person got second aid. One person got a uh, Norton dollar. Which I forgot to explain that. In the uh survival kit that we had to make, I put a rag because that helps with like your mat, all that, like you know. Uh, and some other stuff, but I also put money, and I put a Norton dollar, because that was an inside joke. In case you don't know it, I know most of you are from Samuel Academy, so you do get the reference and get the joke, and that's fine. But if you don't, Joshua Norton was a government official that lived in San Francisco in the 1850s. He made everyone believe, or thought he was an emperor, and he had his own money printed called the Norton dollar. There's around 2,000 units, I believe, printed. And uh, his face is on him. And it became an inside joke with our group when we decided to put a Norton dollar in the second aid kit. And then we have the poster, which was given away, which I got. I will, after this, I'm done recording this, I will go in my closet, find the poster, and just show a small picture of it, if I can. Bad news, fellas. I couldn't find it. I think I gave it to, uh... Oh, yeah, I know what happened, too. I gave it to the teacher at the beginning of the year because he thought it was great and he wanted to show all the other grades it. So that's what happened to it. Now let's move on to number nine. Number nine, we have a night on the town. So uh, over the summer, I went to uh, Daytona. I think it was in, like, late July. If I have any pictures of it, I'll show you. And while we were down there, we went to a restaurant. It was, like, this nice blues musician place like they had blues playing and stuff it was quite uh, epic if i dare say myself they had some great ribs i think i got a rib ribs there i love ribs that's why i got it they also had an album cover of the band which is the most underrated band of all time so that's how you know they're the best musician the not the best musician the best restaurant in the whole daytona area it was great i spent some time with my family it was fun i enjoyed my time down there uh, that I know it's a quick one, but I enjoy myself. Uh, let's move on to number eight. In number eight, we have another one I can't really talk about that much. On June 9th, we had uh, one of the fellas come over. So, you know, we had a nice dinner and talked. That That's really it. We talked till like, 11 o'clock. It was, it was fun. 
said a few jokes, had a few laughs. You know, overall, great. It was also a pretty good day. You know, we ran around town, uh, worked on a few things for a friend, and, you know, solid day. I enjoyed it. At number seven, we have a call back to last year. So do you remember when I talked about how I was able to talk to my friend again at the last day of school? Like, how we kind of just uh, just automatically became friends again after not talking to each other for a couple of years? Well, I met the same person again at the beginning of this year, and now uh, we share a few classes, and, you know, it's, it's great. Uh, so at the end of the day, we go outside and wait for our cars to pull up, you know, we're going to have to. So, uh, you know, we're out here. We're, we're, we still talk. We still talk. So this is an ongoing memory. I just like it. Spending time with the fellas. Like, out of the four things I've talked about, three of them, I've said the word fellas in it. And that is, that is, that's quite weird if I dare say myself. Uh, so, yeah, we're just being honorary. That's all we're doing. It's great. One of the best things that we've pulled out there was... I have this Ronald McDonald flip phone that you could get in a Happy Meal toy. And we went up to random women asking them, hey, can we have your number? Don't worry, we weren't being weird. We were just saying, hey, can I have your number? And we'd flip out my phone and then we'd show them it and they'd laugh. And, you know, it's a fun little escapade. And number six, we have a bike ride that I went on uh, in June of 2022. Uh, I just like riding bikes down, like, back roads, like, small dirt roads. I'll show you a video. I believe I have a video of me riding my bike down a small back road. It's fun, especially during the evening, you know, on a summer day when it's nice and cool. I took the same route that you just saw or might be seeing. I forgot how long the clip is. Uh, during the day, like, at 2 o'clock, and it was, like, 95 degrees, and it took me an hour to get back. An hour to complete, like, a five-mile stretch of land back and forth. So, that's ten miles. Well, during the evening, I could complete that trip in around 25 minutes. So, yeah, it's nice seeing the sunset and all that and riding your bike and the cold air. It's, it's fun. At number five, we have an almost identical thing to number eight, except it lasts longer. It's more enjoyable. And the honoriness didn't end until around 2 o'clock when I decided to go to bed. That's it. It just had more people, and it lasted till 2. We had some nice grilling. We had a nice conversation. We were being funny. It was all fun and games. At number 4, I know right now I'm going through these real quick. Like last year, I was already at the halfway point at 10 minutes in, and we're already at number 4 nearing the end. But near the end, we're going to start getting to some long, very fun, life-changing stories here. And this is one of them. Number four, we have the baby shower. The most recent one that I'm going to be talking about with it happening in early November. Uh, so I had to go to a baby shower in, like, a more richer part of the ca- county, richer part of the state. And, like, well, like most of them, we didn't take part in the cringe baby shower. We went up to, like, uh, a boat yard and looked at a fellow's boat. That was the first thing that we did. We left, got in the car, drove up, and went to see this fellow's boat. And let me tell you, this thing is humongous. Like, it has three bedrooms. Each have their own. The master one has a TV. Both of the rooms have a radio. Not like a talk on radio, like a radio flip the channels, which has to be absolutely great when you're in the middle of the Atlantic. That's a joke. It's like a pontoon, not like a like a... Like, the Evergreen or something like that. It ain't like that. Uh, and then there's a, like, a captain's quarters that you open up. has a small kitchenette and a, bu- a twin-size bed down there, which is a decrease on the bed, but it has a kitchenette and a bathroom, and it's almost hidden. The thing is humongous. Humongous, I tell you. And then we leave, and, you know, we, we have a peaceful evening. We, we The baby shower took place right in front of some woods, so we, uh, Found some, so we cut down a tree, cut some wood, and started a small fire, and watched the sunset over the lake. And it, it was it was firmly great. I enjoyed my time there. It was just hanging out with the fellas. I've said that multiple times in this one, multiple times. Last year, I talked about the sunset repeatedly. I'm talking about spending time with the fellas repeatedly. 
But yeah, I did pick up, you know, the end. We did eventually go in there and say, yeah, congratulations on having a baby and all that and whatnot. They asked us to play a game. It was like this horse races game from the 30s. Like, I don't know how to play it. It's such a horse races board game, 1932. And I think you might get the same game and, like, how to play it or something. It's very weird. I couldn't even grasp it, but somehow I won. At number three, we have a trip I had to go on. And this is actually the most recent one with it happening later in November. So, uh... I'm in, like, the local, my school's local YMCA thing or whatever, and uh, they told me, hey, you're going to, uh, you're going to your state's capital for a trip, and I did, so I said, yeah, maybe I could go see some sights in the capital building and such, and I, and I did see some sights in the capital building and such. Uh, let me just break it down bit by bit so I can remind it and tell someone who would actually kind of listen. So, uh, I get on the bus in the morning. Get all my stuff thrown into the bus. I didn't even know buses had storage. I thought those were filled with, like, fire extinguishers and stuff. We get on. It's the most rainiest day ever. There's only, like, three people I know going on the trip. Uh, I'm able to sit in in front of one because there's 23, like, 20 people going, and a bus has 25 seats. So everyone got a seat to themselves. Uh and, you know, we're just blasting some sick tunes back here. Like, that's what we're doing on the way there. Like, we are blasting the freshest of beats in the back here. Uh, meeting new people, f- blasting the freshest of beats. Like, some absolute bangers on the back of this bus. And no one cares because they're great. And then uh, after that, uh, we sit down and eat at this fancy restaurant. Forgot, forgot the name of it. Sat with those same people, bragged about having a Jeep. They wouldn't leave me alone for the rest of the trip. I just got that unspoken riz, born with it. It's in my genetics. Uh, anyway, sat down, have a really good meal. Really enjoyed it. Had a really good meal, sat down, you know, ate it. All that stuff. Bought some dessert, tip for everyone at my table. Just as a gentleman I am. Uh, went back on the bus, got to our hotel. Uh... Now, the whole thing for it was, like, about law and such. So, I was separated into a room with uh, five people out of the 20 of my thing with 20 other people. Let me explain this more. So, out of my whole, like, YMCA thing, only out of the 24 people who went, six were men. And I was in the men's hotel room with four people. Luckily, three out of the people in that room, including me, were... Uh, going to the meeting that night. So I am with the people in my group who did a law, or created a law that they wanted to see go into play. And we have someone from our school representing the entire thing. So the people who are in my group go up there and do their, like, small talk about it. And then the people behind us who are, like, high school girls from the other side of the state are like, Oh, wow, that was such great. That was so great. And he had some random kid who I know well now. I met him on the trip. I would say his name, but that might reveal stuff about him, so I'm not. They hand him a sheet of paper with a number on it. Man has too, he, man's too powerful. He has too much risk. He, he can't help it. So that's just the first day. There's three, two more days of this ensemble. The second day, we actually go to the building. So we wake up. We go with uh, the other men in the next room because... Like I said, there's six men going on the trip. Four in our room and two in the next. The, the other person in the other room wanted to sleep, which he deserves, because he was also representing us at the Capitol, and that was a big deal. So make it have his rest. Make it have his rest. So me, two other people in our room, and the other person in the other room, who's like this absolute giga shag guy. I think I should bring this guy up. I can't believe I forgot to tell you. I would say his name because I respect him so much, but I'm not. He is... He is, like, the unofficial mascot of, like, this club. Like, unofficial, I meant. Unofficial mascot of this club. He knows everyone. I've never met this guy before. I've just nodded my head and I've seen him in the hallway because I'm respectful like that. But this guy can get along with anyone. He can get you laughing at anything. Just having him in your presence, you are automatically way better than you were before. Anyway, he goes with breakfast with uh, two other girls, uh... So we sit down by the breakfast, basically a sausage McMuffin and a thing of orange juice cost 12 bucks. I'm not kidding. I brought $20 down there. I was planning on spending food for someone else. 
It cost 12 bucks. I just gave him my sandwich and had that orange to do. So I didn't really feel good anyway, but I didn't know what else I was going to eat. So after that, we sat down. We have a small meeting in the morning. Then after that, we sat down. After the meeting was done, we left, went to the Capitol, heard a bigger meeting. Or before we went there, we had a small restaurant. That was pretty great. Got to bomb with some more people. Then we went up to the Capitol and did a few talking. Went back to the room. This time, uh, when we got back to the hotel, they told us to stay in our rooms for two hours and just take a small break, which we did. We got a well-deserved break, well-deserved rest. After a year after talking about stuff, like I'm um, Saul Goodman or something, you know. So uh, after this break's done, they call us down to the big ballroom where they're serving dinner. Eat some dinner with my friends. It was a wonderful meal. They were serving some great Caesar salad. Uh... They were playing a game of Duck, Duck, Do- Goose. It was so crowded that me and a few of friends just watched it. One person did take place in one. So, bravo to him. After this, they did, like, this free time thing where you could, like, be in a silent disco, watch a movie or something. I didn't. I just sat out with the hallway and walked around helping people and stuff. Because what else was I going to do? So, after that... Two of the people in my room left because they had to uh, be a part of band, so they left. Or one person had to leave, and the other person in the other men's room had to leave, and they didn't want someone to be by themselves. The Giga Chad guy, who I was talking about earlier, if you make anyone smile, they thought he was too powerful to be left alone, so they had someone else in there from our room. We just left me and this other guy to spend the night with each other in different beds, thankfully. And uh, that, that was it. That was the end of day two. Day three, we got everything packed, got everything ready. And uh, we heard one last meeting about the bills that they vetoed and thought we could override them. Gladly, both of them didn't. They were very rambunctious, like uh, raise the minimum wage here to 15 bucks, which sounds good on sounds good on paper and I not have that much thought into it. But if you raise the minimum wage, you have to just raise every single, every single job and making it awful for everyone the second thing was to make sure every school is powered by geothermal energy uh now schools aren't popping up every day so this won't do that big of a change that's it so after that we left uh, ate at a culver's i actually got to talk to the person in charge of the lot like of our thing the person who did the most work very charming and la- get lady uh then we got well on that got on the bus had someone braid my hair because they wanted to uh and then that was the end of it I don't know how long I talked about this. I'm always shocked when I find out. But it was a very, very fun trip. It was about to be number one. But I had to choose between the last two. So I want you to know, these top three are very, very close. But this one sadly gets last. And number two, we have the last thing I'll ever bring up about the fellas in this list. I promise. It was a good friend of mine's birthday. He invited us up to his place. We had a nice party for a couple of hours. The other fellows were spending the night, but my cousin was in town who had to do a volleyball game, so uh, I had to leave around 10. Anyway, let me just break this whole party down. So we come, I get in there, or I come in, get in there at 3.30. You know, we have already one guy up there out of the four coming, including me. Sit down, talk, have a nice time being honorary in his room, be, just saying some of the greatest jokes ever. So Jokes so great that if I say them out loud, they'll probably get me canceled. And the other fellow joins up, and it just becomes great. We explore outside of, the, outside of his house, which used to be a strip mine, by the way. Like, he lives in an apartment complex. Not really an apartment complex. Like, most warden story apartments that have, like, four houses separated in, into each other. Led to one of those, and it used to be on top of a strip mine. So we walked around the woods, and we saw some very strange artifacts. If I dare say myself, like some weird things, like a pillowcase in the middle of nowhere. That was kind of weird. We found uh, a, a toy of some sort, and we found a duffel bag full of records. Huh. Walked over to the top of a hill, saw a power pole, then we thought we saw a coyote, and we ran fast as I've ever done. Or no, we were playing hide-and-seek, because I don't care how old you are, hide-and-seek is fun. And one of the fellas hid up at the top of a hill, a very huge hill, I remind you. And we were looking for him all around the property of this complex, looking around the playground they have up there, every inch of the woods. 
behind people's windows and we can't find them. This whole game hide and seek is enough to talk about. This video is already kind of getting a little lengthy, so I'll be quiet. But we, but we finally find him, and we tell him, and he says, "What animal makes like uh, the sound of a coyote?" Which I'm not going to try and recreate. We tell him, "Oh yeah, it's a coyote." So he goes running down here, and then we finally found him. And then for the rest of the night, we, uh, you know, we did, we talked in his room, and you know, we had a good time before I had to leave. Very fun evening. If any of the people who attended this party are watching, all three of you, I salute you. You're truly some of the closest friends I've had. So if you can't tell from how much I'm talking in this one, this year was incredibly better than last year's, in my opinion. So I decided to throw on three honorable mentions before we get to number one. I know you're waiting to hear what number one is, but I want to talk about these memories. They somewhat shaped me in some shape or form. And so I just did not make the cut. I want to talk about them. I can't really sort them in which way they want to go, so I'm just going to sort them in the order that they happen from the earliest. The first one which I'm going to talk about happened on April 9th of this year, where, you know, we went to one of my dad's friends, and all three of us played pool. That was it. We played pool. First time I played nine ball. I've been playing ever since. I love nine ball now. Love it. Love nine ball. Uh... It's a fairly simple game. First time I played it, knocked everyone out of the park at it. So I just got that riz. I can't help it. Born with it, like I said earlier. Uh, it was great. Just a game of pool with a nice few, with a nice, with a nice guy. Really, we had steak before that. It was just, it was fun. That's all I gotta say. It was fun. The next thing I want to talk about was the last day of school, which happened sometime in May. I'm not going to go check the date. Uh, now, we had this big reward day at the end of the school year for the fun of it. And I'm just going to break it down because it was in three form. It was in three ways so you could separate between all three grades. The first one that we went to, we were outside. So this is me and the fellas walking around outside, enjoying the nice morning weather, not knowing how to play cornhole. Luckily, my science teacher, which I talked about earlier in this video... The guy's an absolute legend. I think I should make an all cast just about him someday in the future. But for now, he taught us how to play cornhole. Great. Uh, so we played cornhole out there. They have like this video game trailer out there, but none of us are true gamers. Never said a slur in my life, so I don't count. So, you know, we were just out there. The second part. My homeroom teacher was selling snacks at the concession stand for the people all, for the next grade outside. So they all split us up. We either go to the art the art classroom where they're playing a movie. We go to the science teacher's room and play chess. Now I'm awful at chess. Very awful. Like I was in chess club for the first quarter of the year. And I had a ratio of wins to loses at, with wins, one, and with loses, 60 I'm not joking. I'm not joking. And by the last, and the one win I did win was by pure luck. Anyway, on the last day, I happened to beat two people who didn't really know that much about chess and were on the same level as me, but I beat them because I'm just cool that way. Anyway, they were two of my closest friends. One of them were. One of them isn't really anymore because they did some dubious things over the summer. But, you know. They're close to my friends, so, you know, I'm fine. Shook their hand after playing with them. And the last thing I want to talk about happened, uh, like, a week before Halloween. It was a hayride. So, uh, after driving out of state, just so we could get a hot water heater, we attended this Halloween party for a six-year-old, which you wouldn't think I'd enjoy, but I quite did. They had a hayride just for her, where her father, who owns this big, beefy, Chevrolet with a 7.2 liter motor in it, I believe, or 6.2. It's a huge thing. And drug it around town at like 8 o'clock at night, playing some music behind us. We had a nice conversation with a few strangers that I'll probably never meet again, or have met, and but it was like three years at the time. It was a fun time, talking, enjoying the nice fall weather. Now there's no tree, now there's no leaves on the trees, and it's cold, and Sun sets at 4.30, and it's dark and gloomy, and I hate existing right here. So, yeah, 
Those are all the honorable mentions. Now it's time to get to number one, what you've all been waiting for. Okay, this number one shocked me, but after thinking it, after thinking that my friend's birthday might be the number one moment, I thought about something, another good memory. And strangely, it's from October, around a month before, uh, no, not a month, around a week before the last honorable mention I just talked about. And it was a Jeep ride. So you remember the uh, Willie's Jeep review I made, like, around two months ago at this point? It was based off this Jeep. Remember the same guy I talked about in an a few entries ago? The same guy from, I know, number five and number seven or eight? That guy came up to our house that night. We brought on some food for him and for us. And he saw the Jeep in the garage and he said, you know what? I've seen that Jeep before. I've even, like, sat on the tailgate of it, but I've never rode in it. So we let him ride in it. Why not? This is the first time it's been driven off our property since Halloween. Wow. I enjoyed it. Jumped into the back seat and just took a ride downtown at, like, night. It was fun. Uh, I want to tell... I'm just going to explain it beat by beat, which I know sounds extremely petted out for time, but I like doing that. Leave the driveway. Took this very short video, if you can see it. Then uh, we went down some of the back roads. Same roads I rode my bike on in the earlier entry, if you recall that. Uh, one of our friends has a trail that's open to the public. Drove down there, drove back. Then we went on a straightaway. And this is when my dad's friends, at, my dad friend, my dad's friend asked this question: How fast can this thing go? Now, the fastest we've had this at, if you watch my Willie's Jeep review video, or if you're not into cars, I'll tell you right now, the fastest a CJ2 a can go is like 65 mile an hour, 70 with an overdrive. The fastest we've had it at is 62 to be exact. But, we at, so we tried to see how fast we could get on the straightaway. Now remember, the tires were a little bit flatter and it hadn't been really run at all in almost a year so we went onto this highway where the speed limit was 55 and took off as fast as we can now this jeep does have a speedometer on it but it doesn't work sadly so my fr so my dad's friend pulls out the speedometer app and we uh we use it and it says we clocked out at a whopping let me do a drum roll please 52 miles an hour 52 is when it just started slightly screaming like that. Like that. It could still go more, but the straightaway ended, and we didn't want to blow the motor up. So that so now you know, on, on like, lower air tires and a somewhat poorly maintenanced engine, you can get 52 miles an hour out of a CJ2A. Then we went back onto this trail at night. And after, and after we came back, it was kind of raining. This was around 11 o'clock, not too terribly late. We pull, we pull up down this trail. We drive around, see everything. And we see the light on this guy's house, mainly his shop. Now, this guy's working at night. He's out of town. But his wife might be cleaning for the party, which happened to be the party that was happening next week. Weird how things connect. So we drive up here, and they thought we saw them. Like, you know, the headlights on the Jeep, we thought we honked like the Ooga horn and went, rrr, rrr, rrr. we thought they saw your ear earlier. But I guess the headlights were too dim and the klaxon was too quiet. So we pull up, and I have friends pulls out and knocks on the window. And it scares this woman. It scares her. It got her flabbergasted, discombobulated even. And she, she was scared. So he got out, talked, and then we drove off, rid a little bit more, and we parked it and went home. That was it. After that, we started using the Jeep a little bit more, just kind of because we didn't want it to happen again, where we left it out for almost a year. I mean, we couldn't due to certain circumstances. But another, another thing that we did with it was we drove it to stores that we can, because like I said in my review, it has a nice cruising speed of 40 or 45, so it's nice to just go down to the store and stuff in it. And like I meant to mention, since we didn't really, we took care of it, like we checked the oil and let it run a little bit, like once a month, but 
the battery died on us while we were going up a hill. <laughs> the battery died when we were going up a hill. So we just started it like how people do, like you push it, push it up to the hill, then pushed it when we got to the top where it was flat, pushed it and got to start. That's what we did. So yeah, that is uh, all the memories I have for this year. I am trying to get the current videos that I need to get out near the end of the year. I'm going to do the annual things that did not make the final cut, but instead of doing like video clips, which I think I deleted all of them, if I do have any clips left, I am going to use them, but if I don't, I'll explain something and show like what it could have been. That video is probably going to be longer than it was la last year's. Last year's clocked out at 18 minutes. This is probably going to clock around 30 or 40. Like, it's going to be long. I, I did not do a lot of things this year. The other video that I'm going to do is I'm going to make the uh, Crock-Pot video. I found another Crock-Pot, by the way. I'm going to do the Ranking Every Flag video. I'm not really worried about that one on 5. That one comes out in late January. I haven't even touched the AVGN video since I made that community post. Like, I'm still at season three. Like, the show is still good at the point um, when I'm binge-watching in season three. But the show was never intended to be binge. It was meant to, like, watch three videos from and then go on with your day. It was never made to watch, like, 18 videos in one sitting. It was never designed to do that. So I often get burnt out on it. So don't be surprised that video does not come out like when I thought it would. It ends up coming out in like April or May. So anyway, that's all I got to talk about today. Have a Merry Christmas. Pretty sure I'll upload a video before Christmas and say the same thing. But have a Merry Christmas. Should I do more obcasts? Tell me.